Hi, this is Rachel Cornett here with GeoPivot Magazine. I'm talking to Yihu. Uh, we lost, last talked to you uh, with Emerging GIS Leaders in spring of uh, 2011, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so you, um, you had landed your first job outside of school, so you got your master's degree in um, what, environmental science? Environmental science and the track is environmental informatics. So I take a lot of courses in uh, geographic information system and also the modeling and also some database application design. So oh wow! So you felt like you were pretty prepared um, in GIS before um, before I mean I'm sorry after you graduated. Okay, good. So, so you got your first job in environmental consulting. Now it's been two years later, right? Yep. So, so what what's um what was it like to start your first job out of school? Did you feel like you you know you knew what you were doing, or was there anything that you know you kind of struggled with when you first got started? Yeah, yeah. There is like a couple of things I uh, get started. So things I come to this company and this company has some like really huge project uh, involved a lot of people uh -huh. and some people working on this project and they left the company or they like relocated to, to some other offices uh -huh. so they like left like a giant folder around <laughs> 100 gigabyte files oh, wow. and they do not really have a detailed documentation for all these files. Oh and wow! I was asked a task from manager. He can you make a map using this, this, and that? I totally have no idea what. I <laughs> always spend my like first weeks to like uh, sit on uh, in front of the computer mm -hmm. and to look at, to look at all the like geo database and every file in the geo database. So you didn't get like in school where they just give you like a zip file of all the data and <laughs> you make yeah. a map. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I think the real world is that like you get a lot of files that like other, including like other companies do or some other people do. You need to really like spend a long, not not a long time, at least spend some like several hours mm -hmm. or several days to really like understand what does the previous people do and make your own documentation. Like like for example, oh, this is the soil and this is the water. Thing. And so, like for all different kind of thing, where does the file is, and what's what's the story of these files, and in which year does this data, uh, uh, does this, uh, where is the data from, and in which year the data was collected, so etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think like when when I first come to the job, mm -hmm. I really need to like uh, spend some time to understand the previous work, and uh -huh. in this data, like I cannot really say like. I don't think there are going to be a lot of people can help you. So most of the time you're just on your own and if uh -huh. you have any like questions, just like feel free to bother like any of your colleagues. <laughs> and maybe the truth is that most of the questions they do not really know. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's just a process that you need to like work with people like back and forth. Uh -huh. For example, when you're like making something, you need to go back and forth with like this uh, people A, people B to make sure like you are using the right thing and you are using the most current thing and you are like making something that is makes sense. Oh, interesting. So I, think very, I think in the very beginning, it's really like hard to get started. Uh -huh. But once you get started and you know like everything and you become an expert and other people begin to rely on you. And oh, that's got to feel good, huh? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that really feels good for, for now because I spent a long time to really figure out what's going on with all this like mm -hmm. 100 gigabytes. And I have very detailed uh, documentation and people like from other uh, from other offices and they just come to this project, like newly like uh, joined this project mm -hmm. and they began to ask me like for some information. So I was trying to like make them feel happy, like not like me. <laughs> <In the beginning. laughs> I also really feel frustrated at the beginning. So yeah, I think I did that, which is very good. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, yeah. <laughs> so I just came back from a few different conferences where there are several career panels and multiple employers said that what they're looking for in um, a GIS 
new hire right out of school is that they're looking for technical skills, but they're also looking for communication skills, the ability to write and speak with clients and, and communicate, write reports, that sort of thing. Did you yeah. did you experience that in your new job that you had? I mean, did you have to do that kind of work in addition to, you know, creating maps and doing analysis? Yeah, yeah, I think like for the communication skills, it's very important because sometimes we not only create maps or like different kind of things for our manager, and sometimes we also need to work with uh, the client. Oh, okay. But the, the client, you know, like they do not really understand GS very well, and sometimes they will, they will like make some like very, like to me, like kind of weird questions or weird <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> request. So you need to really like, talk to them and to understand what they are really like looking for because in most of the time they do not really like they do not really sure what they are looking for so you need to ask them the right questions so that you can like lead them to go to the way so that they can think about what they want and you can like for, uh, make some draft maps and send to them and they can look at it and if they are satisfied that's fine if not you need to make some changes and uh -huh. go back and forth with the clients and the managers. So I think you really need to like um, sometimes understand what does the people want and sometimes like ask the right questions to make sure you understand their request. And sometimes yeah. you really have some patience because clients' men, uh, mind are sometimes like changing like all the time. Yes, <laughs> you know, that's so true. Yeah, so I think like patience is really important at, at this part. And I think secondly is the writing skills. Uh -huh. I think like for me, because our project re rely on GIS a lot. So sometimes when I doing some maps or uh, a lot of uh, spatial analysis, mm -hmm. so our manager, uh, they does not really quite understand how does this like uh, spatial analysis, geoprocessing tools going, uh, they do not really understand how does this go. Mm -hmm. So when sometimes they are writing a report like for how to, how can we get this re result? We need to assist them to so that they write the the they write the right thing and oh. yeah, they can make people to understand. They do not really confuse with people. So the technical part is very important because when we like write a report, we need to write very detailed. How can we come out this result? So oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So so what percentage of your job do you think are you doing communication? you know, interpersonal skills versus sitting at your computer, you know, working with data and maps? Mm, I think, like, uh, I think most of the time I was, like, sitting in front of the, the computer and creating the, uh, the maps and doing the data analysis. Uh -huh. But during, like, d during this time, I need to, like, make a lot of phone calls, like, to people from Chicago or people from uh, Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. So, like, so that you can, like, uh, like talk with people because you, you do not really, like, do this part by your own and mm -hmm. you need to, like, understand what are people doing and sometimes you need to work together. For example, I need to, like, for uh, sometimes I need to pre prepare some data and maybe send it to some other uh, people and they can analyze it, this data or sometimes people get some data and they send it to me and I need to work on this data. So it's a lot of, like, turn around with, like, people from different offices uh, so not the lo local office so it like brings up a lot of challenge when you like trying to communicate or talk to people like in other offices because uh -huh. you don't really talk face to face and people cannot see your face and people cannot yeah. see your face. so we are we are using a lot of things like go to meeting or webex we pre pretty much like um, use it like every time we call so that we were doing something for example we have a giant excel spreadsheet and then I can show like people how does this going and what does the first tab, second tab, and third tab do. Oh, and so you're doing things. like online presentations, basically yeah. like a web presentation. Yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not formal. It's just like to help people understand. Or uh -huh. some, sometimes like my manager, like from Chicago or some other offices, they need to make me understand their needs. But oh, right. the the words are like too complicated when you want to look <laughs> at something. You can show something on the screen, mm -hmm. and we can just like work on that. So I think that part really like gave me a lot of experience uh, working with people from mm -hmm. different uh, 
different like locations and we, we do not uh, talk to uh, face to face. So it's kind of very interesting in my work. Like most of the people I have worked on, I have never saw them. Oh, and wow. In the past two years and we have a lot of email, mm-hmm. the communication, phone call communication and go to meeting, WebEx communication, but we just never saw each other. I well, think it's very, I think it's a very like true story, especially in the, uh, in a, like internationalized consulting firm, uh-huh. I have some other friends that like work for some other uh, companies, and uh-huh. they have very similar experience. So like the people are needed to like work with people from different office, but you will never see them. Oh, that's so, interesting. So do you do you have any advice for people that are still in school? They're taking classes, and they haven't you know maybe they have six months left or a few weeks left before they graduate. Do you have any advice to them about how they could prepare? For this kind of activity, so they can show a client that they know, you know, know how to communicate well. Yeah, I, I think like uh, firstly, like people, uh, I think the best way is to like for me when I uh, when I uh, interview with uh, my uh, my current companies and some other organizations, I spend like nearly one month to uh, collect all of my GS works. Okay. So I basically print out them and put it in a in a like in a folder mm-hmm. and write a like small description for each of the uh, for each of the map I created. Mm-hmm. So I put it in a very like organized and beautiful portfolio. So like every time I go to the job um, job fair or like on site interview, mm-hmm. I will bring this up and to tell them like what do I do and what's what's the process of this. And uh, like, what's my result? So I will just flip through all the maps or some descriptions I have already prepared. So I think that's a good way to like make your like make your uh, inter inter uh, interviewers think about you are a really good communicator and you prepare very well. So I oh, like, so you be, so by preparing like the proper graphics and um, I guess what would you call them? Just the materials. And then being able to speak about what you're doing to potential clients and explain your maps in, in, um, you know, easily understandable words that helped you to get your first job. Yep. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Well, thanks for spending some time with us. And uh, it's good to check in um, after two years. So congratulations on all you've you've accomplished so far. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.